to the listeners worldwide, Nedzina Langanderenda Nichibura, a.k.a. Randy, your number one MC. Yes, man. And I did tell you today's a special day, man. I got my father in the building, yeah? You'll see, we look exactly alike, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Yeah. It's such a, a, a special show. And just in case you don't know, you tuned into Sportainment on THD.24, your hottest sports and entertainment show show a big shout out to our global listeners man worldwide shout out to you in the east the west the north the south and in the center we don't leave you out but i don't want to waste any time i want to go straight into it ladies and gentlemen mm. our guest today for me this is a special one i'll keep it real i'm not gonna front about it our guest today ladies and gentlemen i know he doesn't want me to blow his horn i know that but i'm gonna highlight his greatness a, a, a person who I see reflects the true meaning of leadership. You know, a person who's, you know, cemented so many great things in me. A father, a husband, uh, a great teacher. You know what? If I continue, we're, 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 this is the, the list is, so, is certainly endless. But beyond that, a person who has a passion for seeing young people in the greater positions. Ladies and gentlemen, a great man of note. Because what is great if you, what is good if you understand great? Good can't exist. So ladies and gentlemen, as I introduce him, he goes by the name of Mr. Anton Fenta. This is where we go. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fenta, how are you, sir? I'm good, thank you, my boy. Thank you so much for the privilege I have of being here with you today. Thank you mm. for, for your great Especially on today. On After today. After what happens on Saturday. After the World Cup. Yeah, absolutely. We are the champions, huh? Yeah. We no are the champions. We are the best in the world. Mm. And and you know what's even better? Because we, we, we today's show is dedicated fully to rugby. Mm. You know, this is sports in general. Sportainment, we touch on other sporting codes, but there's no ways. Yeah. There's no ways we can, you know, segment and talk about other sporting codes today. We have to specifically speak rugby in South Africa. How, wh where were you watching the game, sir? At home. At home. Yes. How, how was it for you? Um, no, it is very, very, very fulfilling if i can put it that way really. yeah yeah you see i've watched the game three times the yes. first time i just watched it for fun okay to enjoy the experience yes. the second time i watched it to make sure i wasn't dreaming <laughs> <laughs> and the third time yesterday i actually watched it to learn to learn you know, to, to figure out exactly why we beat them it was amazing it was amazing yeah. and you know mm. I, I was just i don't know were you screaming just like me because i couldn't hold myself yeah, <laughs> yeah the first yeah. half was quite intense yes because i, I we, we really couldn't tell where it's going but we could mm. see that you know what especially when it comes to our forwards mm. they they i think the forwards won the game for us to be quite honest yeah, in the first half especially from the scrumming we psychologically mm. I don't know mm. whether we distorted England or we, but there was something that happened there where I could tell that, mm -mm, no, we've got something going. We've got something going. But beyond that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this guest today is one of my mentors, a person who planted such significant seeds in my life, not even a seed, seeds, you know, and I, I, I'm so happy that he's here because we have to share such greatness into the world. You know, there's a saying so that people never get their flowers while they can still smell them, meaning that we hardly really acknowledge people while they are in our presence. We only mm. acknowledge people in, in, in the, the, the moment where we say goodbye to them. And I want to say, you're getting your flowers today, sir. Thank you, my boy. All right. But you're going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> We're allowed to cry, okay? Today's a special episode. We're allowed to cry. <laughs> but beyond that, um, we were speaking Rugby World Cup. There's a yes. lot that we're going to touch on. Uh, it's not just going to be based on the spring box yes. alone. We're going to speak a development in South African rugby. Yes. But we're going to stick in how Thing, but we're gonna you know link what we're talking about across the board throughout yes. the whole country so mm. let's let's also jump into other projects as well that we we are you are planning alongside myself i have to say this because i was positioned by a great mm. leader you know so there's a lot that we're going to be touching on today in the 50 minutes that we have so yes. let's jump into it irp 2019 rugby world cup yes we're the champions but what do you think the secret was Leadership. Leadership. Leadership, absolutely. I think everything rises and falls on leadership. Yeah. You know, and on the day, 
we were ready for that match and we pulled it through. Yeah. You know, a week ago, England was the world champions even Ooh. before they played the game. Oh, you know. So. Did, did you see what they did with New Zealand when yeah. then they did the haka? Mm, no, it was incredible. It, it was the mm. first time I ever saw that formation. Yeah. I don't think the haka has ever faced that before. Yeah. Yeah. So, but but when you say leadership, let's yes. let's speak to the person, the ordinary person, perhaps who does not have an understanding of leadership. Yeah. What would you say leadership is? <sighs> Well, there's a lot of different definitions of leadership, yes. right? That we yes. can go to the theoretical ones of yes. saying leadership is all about influence. Yes. But uh, you know what? At the end of the day, leadership is that ability to, to change people's lives, mm. you know, and to try to get people to, to better themselves mm. and to outdo themselves. Mm. For me, the whole principle is why are we here? Yes. You know, why? Why did God put us on this planet? Mm. Why did God put us in this country? Mm. Why did he put the two of us in the studio? At so this moment. Yes, yes, at this moment. Yes. And the reason is really to fulfill our potential, to become the people he created us to be. Yes. That is why we are. We were designed for a specific purpose. Absolutely. And we go through mm -hmm. different things in our lives to get that right. Yes. Rugby for me, when, when I coach rugby, that's the first thing I'd say to my boys. You know, why are you here? Yeah. To become the man God, the man God created you to be. And rugby is a tool that we use for that. And, and look, it's one of the best tools. It is working. Yes. We clearly are the best in the world when Absolutely. it comes to that duel, you know? Yeah. And, and and since we're speaking leadership, I just want to mm. get your view on the coaches. Yes. I want to speak about both coaches because I have tremendous respect for uh, Eddie Jones, yes. John Mitchell, mm. um, and Rasi Rasmus. Mm. And um, what do you think was their secret in their leadership? Because yes, you said it, England a week ago, we're certainly the world champions. Mm. And I, I'll be honest, if perhaps they weren't playing South Africa, the Springboks in the final, I was going to root for, for England on the basis of Eddie Jones. Great. You know? So what do you think his method is? And Because everywhere he goes, he certainly has that, there's that X factor yes. that he brings. If we just recap quickly to those who are perhaps not conscious rugby followers, four years ago, our opening fixture uh, against the host nation this year, Japan, we we got punished, sir. Yes. We got finished. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and no one ever expected us to lose against Japan. Yes. And Eddie Jones was there. And previously in 2007, when Jake White was the head coach, who was his assistant? Eddie Jones. Eddie well. Jones. Mm -hmm. There's that X factor. What, what makes him, in just your opinion, a very great leader? Because he's clearly got something. And I'm saying, I'm asking this on the basis of, because you have that as well. You know, perhaps it might not be recognized globally but it's certainly recognized amongst people like myself so i'm sure you can connect with that what do you think eddie jones's x factor is i think it's the same as what you will find with rossi mm. and, and the other good coaches in the world as well warren mm. gatland steve yes. hansen joe schmidt it's clarity of purpose Ooh, you know there's such a clear way of communicating with their own players they've got a very clear vision mm of where they're going and what they're doing and why they're doing it. Mm. And there's a clarity of purpose, a clarity of communication. Mm. And when you got that in your squad, then you are going to be successful, mm. you know, as a mm. leader. And I really just feel this is what these guys have done. If you look at Eddie Jones, he, he really, he identified the leaders in his team that yeah. he wants to work with. He has been building them up. You look at that England squad, there's some excellent oh. leaders in that team, oh. you know, and they're all pulling in the same direction. Yes. You know, yes. it takes me back to Genesis, um, Genesis 11, where we where, where the Bible tells us about the Tower of Babel. Yes. You know, and how these guys got together and they decided they're going to build the biggest building in the world. Yes. And they were building. Yes. And then God, it says there, that uh, God looked down from heaven and he said, these people speak one language. Ah. You know? Ah. Therefore, they have one goal. They've got one language. From now on, nothing they do will be impossible for them. Ooh. You know how powerful those words are that Ooh. God spoke? Common so when vision. people are speaking one language, when we have one common goal Ooh. that we are working towards, then we become unstoppable. Yeah. And that is what good coaches get right. Yes. You know, they yes. create that clear vision of where are we going, why are we doing this, and what are we doing it for. Yes. You know, and I believe on Saturday... That is what you saw. Ooh. I think Larry Rossi stripped away all the other stuff. Yeah. And he brought through to the guys the consciousness that you are not just playing a game of rugby. Mm. You know, you are out there fighting for unity yes. in your country. 
Yes. You know, to bring your people together. And that is what this is about. And it's certainly something yeah. South Africa needed. Um, absolutely. Especially what we've been going through. You know, mm. I, I can certainly, you know, second that as well. And while we're speaking of, of the people that Rasi Rasmus put together, our honorable coach, let's mm. talk about the South African players quickly. You know, mm. I, I know that I want to speak development and we're going to get there. Yes. But we have to just recognize some of these youngsters that I feel like there was a balance. Mm. You know, when, when um, Tender Rhyme, Tuarira, Beast, was asked that before even going to the World Cup, um, what, what, what makes this group significant? He's like, there's an energy he's never felt mm. ever before with these guys. There's young, there's this youthful, strong, energetic spirit, and there's this uh, experience energetic spirit that comes yeah. together. I mean, I, I don't want to lie, so I was so excited. I keep it I keep it straightforward. My favorite player in the Springboks currently is Peter Steph the toy. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, feel like he's he the most wonderful world player for you. Like, and yeah. yes, I, yeah. I'm calling it right now, you know. Yes. And I just want to talk about some of the players. You know, mm -hmm. I know for, for those who don't know, you you played eighth man. Yes. When you played rugby. Even though I look like a prop. <laughs> <laughs> but you were an eighth man. Yeah, back in know? the back in the day. Back in the days, man. you know. Mm. So I'm assuming Dwayne Vermeer and you you'd relate more. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I played eighth man flank, a little bit of lock. Yes. Yeah, and uh, yes. Let's highlight some of the other players. Mm. Who who for you stuck out? Well, for me, Beast, first of all, we've got to just mention him. You know, he came full circle now. Oh. Uh, the, the, the first place where he really cemented himself in the consciousness of the world was against the British Lions 10 years ago. Yes. When he destroyed an English tight dead prop. Yes. Yes. And now he's gone full circle and did that again to Dan uh, Cole and so oh. And that laid the foundation. You know, you can read all the all the articles that people will say to you, yeah, it started in that scrum. Mm. Um, I believe we would still have won even if the scrums were equal. Okay. I don't think it was just the scrums that won the game for us. So you think backline as well? Yeah, you know, and the whole way they, they, they actually executed the options. Mm. The decision making on Saturday was mm. spot on. Mm. Mm. But mm. it started with the scrum. Okay. You know, and uh, we destroyed them there. And that, that is a mental thing against the English. Yes. Because they think they got the strongest scrum in the world. Yes. You know, and so you know, take the, them on there. The Northern Hemisphere has this yes. thing of playing rough rugby. Yeah. It's a raw. It's mm. it's it's very yeah, it's it's not as clinical. It's very, you know, very mm. intense. But I think we we caught up to them, you know. But other amongst other players, you know, who else stuck out to you? Because I would always relate to the backline players. Yeah. I was so proud of Marka Zoloman PMP. Mm. I think that's another miracle story. No, it is, eh? That is a real kid who came through the rough yeah. side of life and he made it now. Yes. That is the poster boy for development in South Africa. 100%. That's the guy that we should be holding up there. Yes. You know, and say, this is this is just an African rugby player. Yeah. This is what you can achieve. Yeah. And yeah. what about Jesslyn Colby? Let, no, let's not leave Jesslyn out. I mean, he's he's been told his whole life is too small. Yes. It's like what people told you. <laughs> yes, I do. You know, exactly. <laughs> and he's even smaller than me. He's shorter than, than me, yes. yes. And, and he did it, you know. But if you look at the amount of power in that boy, it reminds Ooh. me of BK. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, he's like that. He's just an explosive pocket rocket mm. that you cannot bring down. Did you yeah. see that last try, though? Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, you know, agility. Especially the fact that it was Farrell that he beat. Yes. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Farrell is always the problem. <laughs> yeah. I remember last mm -hmm. year when, uh, I think it was during the test matches, uh, that we had where mm. I think we won two out of three they beat us in Newlands in the third one mm. um, Farrell was uh, I think he bumped into Erstazen mm. I don't know if you remember yeah, that collision that, that uh, tackle with no arms with no arms and, and you know, that's why the IRB changed the rule because yes of because of that tackle yeah. you know and that's why I felt like mm. no there's a score to settle here yes. but he's that, and I don't know if he was on form or not mm. but there was certainly because he was he was originally at ten, the fly off, mm. and then he moved to to inside center. Mm. You know, so so I don't know if it, because you want to have his presence on the field, yeah. and he's a leader, he's a captain as well. You know, but another guy that before before we even move on to this, because we have to acknowledge the spring box, look on your arm. Yes, excellent. Ah, oh, mm. finesse. I think really you can go through every one of those Springbok players and say oh, they're, they're all stepped up. One to twenty-three. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and uh, the, the concept of that bomb squad of these. 
Yes. That, that, those finishes. Yes. You know, as a coach, you so often get the kid, you select him in the 23, but now they start the game on the bench and then yes. they're all disappointed. Yes. They don't understand what an important role they have. Yes. You know, and these yeah. guys did it. Eh? That bomb squad came on and they were like a bomb. They Too destroyed much. it. Uh, yeah. And I must give credit to Franz Stein there. You know? 100%. Uh, previously, I've been quite critical of Franz Stein because I felt he was arrogant at yes. certain stages in his life yes. and stuff. But he came back into the squad and he's been such a humble, mm. essential component of this team. Mm. You know, he took charge of that bomb squad mm. idea. Mm. And you could see the passion that yes. those guys brought onto the field. So they really embraced their role. Yes. And they executed superbly. And, and they, uh, everyone, and that's why I'm saying clarity of purpose. Clarity you know, that entire purpose. team Take knew exactly there. what they were doing. Yes. So they knew for this period of time, this is going to be my job and I'm going to execute it properly. 100%. And it was superb. The work rate was fantastic. That's why Peter Steff won World Player of the Year because of his work rate, because of the fact that he's got character. That's oh, the thing. Oh, oh, you oh. know, I always say to my boys when I coach them, I say to them, you know, you show me your talent yes. when you got the ball. Yes. But you show me your character when you don't. Oh. Because it's when you don't have the ball that you got to work. That's true. And that is where the real good players come out. It's where that doing the stuff off the ball, getting yourself back on your feet, getting yourself back in position, yes. working hard for the team, for the guy next to you. Yes. That's character. That is character. And that's what this team has. That is amazing. And mm. I just want to remind our listeners worldwide, man, they're still tuned into Sportainment on THD.24. Don't forget on social media, you can touch base with us at THD.24. And also, we've got our personal social media handles at Sportainment underscore on touch. That's Instagram. And on the Twitter space, it is at Sportainment underscore T. Before we move on to the development side, one more thing, because I, I could hear it everywhere. You know, I, I I love this man and I love how he plays, but there's a lot of critique that was given to him. Faf de Clark, he's kicking. What is your view? In a short space, sir. He was doing what he was told to do. Oh, uh. <laughs> you know, people will say to you, that, that this is what irritates me so much. Is everyone yeah. saying, no, we changed our game plan for the final. Yes. As a coach, you don't change your game plan. You got a game plan. Yes. Right, so with me coaching now, mm. I've got a game plan that I coach mm. which provides the foundation for decision making on the field yes you know I cannot sit there with a remote control and control my boys yes. and tell them you got to now do this <laughs> when Rossi started coaching mm. uh, with the free state I don't know if you remember but mm. he had those lights up at Free State Stadium. He had the orange light and the green light. So he will flash the lights up on the pavilion. To give signals. Boys, yeah, to give signals. Yeah. Now they know, like, hey, we got to do this. Mm. And he changed his style from there where he actually empowers his, people, his, his players yes. to make the decisions on the field. Wow. You know, that is leadership. That's yes. empowerment. Yes. So yes, what I do as a coach is I coach you different structures, different attacking structures that's part of our game plan. Mm. And inside that framework, you got to make your decisions on the field. Mm. And that's what we did. That's so when we played Japan, he said to the guys, listen guys, you cannot let this game become loose. Yes. So we got to pull it tighter. So yes, let's pull it up. Let's put them under pressure. Let's keep it tight. Yes. Because the moment you try to play their game, yes, they're going to run you off your feet. No, they'll punish. You know. <laughs> and, uh, and, and we didn't. We didn't yeah. fall into that trap like Ireland and Scotland did. Mm. Okay. So mm. we, we kept it tight. We kept it close. Against Wales, the same thing. Yes. The game that we played against Wales is exactly the same game that Wales play. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. So we adapted very, quite well. Yeah. Very conservative. Put you in your half. Put you under pressure. Close the game down. You know, so we just mm. did the same thing. Do you think if we, we played against New Zealand in the final, we are going to win? Absolutely. You reckon? Yeah, no, absolutely. Don't you think New Zealand has a psychological, or South Africa has a psychological block when I we play I New think Zealand. we destroyed that over the last few years. Mm. You know, I think last year that victory that we achieved in Wellington. Yes. That changed that mindset yes. for us. Yes. Now, I can even tell you that game that we played against them, the first match. The first match. You know, that game could just as well have gone in our favor. Mm. The small little things that turned mm. against us. Mm. But I think South Africa would have beaten New Zealand on Saturday as well. A done deal. Yes. That, this was meant for us. Yeah. All right. and, and what I want to say is, now this game plan that we employed on Saturday, suddenly we're running the pods and we're playing the tail. Yes. You know, so it goes to the head, plays the tail, plays to the next pod. Yes. That is exactly how we've been playing in the super, in the in, in the championship. Yes, in the rugby championship. Rugby championship so it's the not same like system. suddenly yes. something new. We didn't use those two practice days <laughs> to develop something new. Yeah, understand. He's been yeah. building that over eighteen years. So we're giving yeah. your players options, mm. and on the field, you guys execute your options. Mm. If you look at that England defence, they were so tight. Mm. So playing those tails at the back. 
You know, and playing around the forwards there in the beginning. Yes. I mean, they, we almost had two tries in those first five Certainly, minutes. certainly, yeah. certainly, certainly. I so. could pick that up. But now, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want us to romanticize things. Yeah. Because then, you know what? We 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 don't dwell into what needs to be dwelled on. Yes, we're world champions. And I think this is something the country needed, just like you've said it, you know, but consistency is required. Yes. But also, we have to now look at the whole entire scope, which leads us to development. Mm. And I think this is the, the whole point of today's, the theme of today's show is development. You know, they, they, there's a lot of talent or other potential in, in, in so many young people in this country, but accessibility to mm. opportunity, accessibility to the correct leadership, accessibility to the, the correct facilities, you know, just surroundings is limited. Mm. And I, I'll be honest, eh? rugby is predominantly looked at as a white sport. Yes, That's the truth. We, we can't hide it. it. It's foreign to majority of the black people in this country. Mm. You know, the only significance is it unified us in 1995. Mm. You know, I, I, I have the privilege of working with Francois Pinar and, you know, having conversations with him, he, he tends to, <clears throat> he tends to have these um, chats with us and he's like, you don't understand how powerful the sport is mm. it goes beyond the race yes it's it's it, it's linked to white people but it has the power of magnifying a nation a power of unifying a nation but in that being said a lot of young black people are sidelined mm. somehow from the sports which takes us to what i said earlier development now i know you play a, a big role in the development structures of a lot of young people for those who don't know that's a great man, man. Played a big role in my life, you know. For the, I always like highlighting certain things. People think we show offset, but we're showing God off, you mm. know. And, you know, having played for Grand Como, Blue Bull Sides, Academy, uh, Blue Bull Sides for two years, getting the opportunity to go study because of rugby as well, being in the University of Johannesburg and the 19 Curry Cup uh, as well. Those, those played a big role. Your, your role, the investment you gave to me played a big role. But I know there's a other, another young child who perhaps has more potential than me, but does not have that. So I want to speak about development with you. And just I want to get your mind around it before we start dissecting it. Okay, first of all, I just want to say that I'm not going to pretend to be this guru. Okay, <laughs> or this, this genius, or this development yes. specialist or whatever. I'm just a normal guy. Yes. Right? I'm a normal teacher mm. at a normal school. And God placed me... Um, at the school where I am and he's using me thankfully yes right I'm grateful for that but I've got <laughs> the best job in the world yes but anyway um, you know if, so if you want to speak to real development guys there's a guy like Jakub Kutzer at the Falcons who's, mm. who's brilliant you know mm. Tim here at the Lions who's yes. brilliant with development yes they work for their unions as well yes myself I work for my school yes and the work that I do in terms of development is is a, is a, a love task if I can put it that way. <laughs> yes. it's a service I give um, and I'm very grateful that I'm being given the opportunity to use that. Okay, mm. now um, rugby is a very, very important tool in the development of young men in our country. Mm. Later, you must ask me the question why boys should play rugby because that's important. Okay, I, I won't leave but, that out. Yeah. Yes, yeah. But um, if you look at the history of South Africa, yes, then rugby was a white sport, mm. you know. Um, it, it speaks to the psyche of the Afrikaner person mm. specifically. Mm. So Afrikaners love rugby because of the physicality yes. and, and what it brings and all the rest. And it's pretty much built into um, mm. the, almost the, the cultural psyche, mm. if I can mm. put it that mm. way. Mm. Mm. So um, with, uh, therefore, moving into rugby, into a sport for, for black people, yeah. it's difficult to compete with soccer. Mm, at the moment mm, because mm, mm. you need resources that's true and unfortunately soccer you need a ball yeah <laughs> and you can play it anyway you know you can yeah. go play it on the on the, on, the, on the parking lot outside just mm. create your own goals get a ball and you can play yeah go try to play rugby on that parking lot yeah it's not gonna work it's not gonna unless work. it's touch <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah you know so you need facilities mm. unfortunately so you need a proper facility to play to play rugby and to exercise it yes and um, that is why the you you need money yes you know um, rugby is such a vital sport in the development of our boys, and I'll get to that now. But mm. but we, we, we do need 
investment and we do need money mm. to play it, mm. right? So um, since 1994, well before that, we've got a very, very proud history mm. of rugby in black communities in yes. our country, especially in the Eastern and the Western Cape. Yes. You know, I've, got, cause, I'm a cause oh, yes. I've yeah. got so many friends in those areas who are, who are really, um, um, how do I put it? Passionate rugby players, mm. you know? I mean, Alan Fritz, um, mm. He's a good friend of mine. He's now the president of Swimming South Africa. Now, he used to play there in the Eastern Cape. Yes. And he's got so many friends there. You yes. See. I can see that the topic is getting people conversating. Even the phone is like, they, they just want to ask questions. <laughs> no, this, I'm, being, I'm being spammed okay, here okay. by these guys. I see a lot of people are like, hey, <laughs> like, this conversation is heated up. I just, boom, yeah. boom, boom. <laughs> but you were still saying Alan Fritz. Yeah, now Alan yes. Fritz told me about him and his friends, how they played. And it's, it's a very strong, even in apartheid, yes, there was a yes. very strong rugby support even in the colored communities mm. we got to recognize that we got to honor that mm. however the that terrible government policy never allowed those people to get the same opportunities yeah. and all that and that gap has always been there yeah so uh, since 1994 there has been different measures in place to try to make rugby as a sport more popular in the in the black communities yes. and um, there's been a lot of money that has been pumped in to development programs it hasn't always gone to where it's supposed to go very important part to talk you know? about sir, yeah. because there's a lot of uh, gatekeepers yeah the, uh, the wrong people in the uh, the right positions yes you know who yeah. block the process of movement yeah yes but i didn't want to stop your thought process please please continue yes yeah so um that that that's been but there's been very good programs mm. in place but the programs haven't always been successful mm. okay so the concept of um development for me is that we need to take this momentum that has been mm. generated now mm. and we need to get it through the larger population of South Africa. Yes. And we need to make sure that we produce more, not just Makazola Mapimpis. Yes. But we need to produce more Bongi Umbunambis. Bonambis. I'm Tanda Yes. Our captain Understand. himself. Yes. So I want to see more people, mm. white people, black people, colored people, Everyone. come through in our system. Mm. But at the moment, there is a massive shortage mm. of young black boys playing rugby. Not but, a shortage, but there's not enough. If you look at the larger position, larger population, yes, we do not have enough. Yes, who are playing and who are coming through. Yeah, and that is something that we need to address. Now, how do we do that, knowing that this is a holistic approach? You see, we can't. I, I, I believe the reason why I went to university was to understand one thing: systematic thinking, mm. connecting the dots. You know, uh, how do we do that when we know that because rugby is it's a physical sport as much as it's more psychological as well. But diet, mm. you know, uh, nutrition, just environment, mm. um, you know, just being around certain people. I, I know. I remember going back to to let me take it back to Sutherland High School, the, the great school I, I had the great opportunity of attending. You know, I, I, the, I played great rugby because I was around people who you know ate well, yes. who who played well, who not necessarily lived rugby twenty four hours, but even that little eight hours that we did was very impactful for me mm, mm. you know it was positive competition now i want to speak about that's why i don't want to romanticize things yeah. there's there's young township boys yes. there's you know and if we speak pretoria you got your boys from atridgeville mami lodi so shanguve Let, let's leave the the, the, the township uh, kids we've got that middle class mm. group that's left out yes with so much potential just recently, for those who don't know, we were we we had the great privilege of being part of the O R Tambo Soncini Games that were held here in Germiston. That's right. Yes, and the city of Twani did the best. Yes, uh, our under fourteen team. You know, having the, the the great privilege of managing the team and also being part of the coaching side of things. You know, we didn't even concede one try. But mm. beyond just winning that, you could see that there's a lot of potential in these boys. Mm. But they're not from your 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 A list of cl uh, uh, schools, your Uffies, your your Pretoria Boys High, your your Saint Albans, and I'm just specifically speaking Pretoria now, the city yes. of Tswane. Other there's other regions as well who are going through the same things, but so much potential. How do we draw that potential okay. and really move and create something out of these youngsters? Let, let's get straight straight through the chase. The yes. Thing is, I want us to produce 
boys of color yes in the springbok jersey yes more of them because there's so many with good potential yes that fall through the crack you spoke about the missing metal yes you see at the moment if you look at the development programs that we have in place mm. there's a decent program for the kids in the townships yes you know so uh they, there's opportunities for some of those boys mm. they get through in our city our goal is to create a pathway of development for the kids from under 14 through to craven week yeah and then if they're good enough there that they can maybe go play professional yes rugby. right but now so we hit them at under 14 with Oliver, Oliver Tumble. Yes. Okay, so that's the, we, we select the different municipality teams yes. and we play at that tournament. Mm. That is an incredibly important tournament for yes. us because there we identify those good boys. And yes. We teach them there the structures that they will need at under 16 Grand Corps. Yes. Because your big thing is now your, 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 your boys, they come from the smaller schools, the medium schools, the township schools, wherever. Mm. Right. They come through now, they get in part of a high performance program at under 16. Yes. Where they now got to play, um, compete against the boys from the level one schools. Yes. Right. Number one, they've never been coached in a structure. Mm. So they don't understand attacking structures. They don't understand defensive structures. Mm. Okay. Number two, they've never been properly conditioned. Mm. And number three, they don't have a proper diet. Mm. So what we do at this under 14 level now with the city of Tuana is mm. we teach those boys the bull structure. Mm. So those boys, when they are done with us after those two months of training, yes. then they are all able to fit into the bulls pattern of play that they're going to hit when they get to under 60. Mm. So if they get invited to trials later on, they understand where they're supposed to be. Yes. They're not in the way, mm. you know? So they know this is this is my running lines. This is where I support. Yeah. This is what I got to do. I, this is my role. Yeah. And immediately they got a better chance of selection. Yes. Because how it's worked in the past is these kids get invited to the trials and mm. they look like a duck out of water because yeah. they don't know where they're supposed to be because these guys have been coached in a certain pattern. They don't fit that pattern. Yes. And therefore they're in the wrong places yes. in the field. Yes. Right. So that under 14 system for us is critical, mm. but it's aimed at the the, the, the smaller schools. Yes. So your level one and two schools up there, they their boys are good. Yeah. So you got three levels of, of of players of color. Yes. You've got your boys up in the level one schools. Now in Pretoria, mm. now I know in the different provinces is different. You go <laughs> yeah. down to the Eastern Cape, Western Cape, <laughs> there's, there's yeah. so many there's a lot good of depth. players of yeah. color. It's it's beautiful. A lot of depth, yes. In our province, you don't necessarily have that. The inland. Because, yeah. Because the boys do not play so much rugby, mm. and that is what we try to do. Mm. You know, so with us, you've got three levels of, of, of players. Mm. You've got the guys in the level one schools, mm. which is mainly, um, if you look at players of color mm. in in Pretoria, mm. right in the in, in northern Gauteng, yes, in the Bulls, then you will find they mainly in English schools. Yeah. Because our situation is the majority of schools are Afrikaans. Yes. Right. And Afrikaans schools are white schools. Yeah. Right. That's true. That yeah. is true. So you do yeah. get you do get some players of color in those schools. Mm. You know? Especially a school like Garfontein, they will go and buy yeah. kids, get kids from the yeah. Cape and put them on bursaries. Even St. Albans, we yeah. have to put it in there. Yeah. 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 Menlo Park, they, yeah. they get some good players of color. Yeah. Um, I see Office is producing a few good boys of color as well. Are there some color? Are yes. the players of color no, now? No. putting that through. Yeah. Is it the so colored boys? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there are some. That's interesting. Yes. That's interesting. So you do get a few up there. Mm. Most of them, though, are there on scholarship imported from another province. Yes. Right. So your homegrown black child. I neglected. Where does he go? Mm. He goes typically either he will be in the townships, mm. you know, in the rural areas, in the inner city, mm. or he will be attending an English school, mm. you know. Mm. which are not up there that's true so we are the english schools are pretty much level two three four yes you know yeah uh, uh to, to give you a, an idea a level one school is typically a large strong rugby school like your office yes Park, yes and other schools like that so there you are typically looking at between 12 and 20 rugby yeah. teams in that school yeah a level two school is the old large schools you know, like you remember Pretoria Noord. Yep, and, uh, those, those type of guys. Yeah. Those are typical level two schools. Mm. So there you will find between uh, about eight to 12 teams yeah. in the school. St. Albans vary between level two and level one. Yes. You know, Boys Eye is a level one. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. And then your level three schools is basically about um, five teams, five, mm. six teams per, per, for, for the school. Okay. So they will have, now if you look at a five team school, that means that I've got one team per grade. Mm. So my grade eights are typically under 14 my yes. grade nines are under 15, 15 my grade tens under 16, 16 my grade elevens are in the second team yeah. and my my uh, grade 12 yeah. so that is a good functioning rugby school yeah. even though they only got one team per and per that grade. would be level three that's level three and four okay 
Then your level five schools will have maximum of four teams. Yes. So somewhere they don't have a team. Either yes. they don't have an under 14 or they don't have a second team. Yes. But they typically have four or less. Yes. And that's also the townships and the, the inner city and the rural schools. Yes. They are like that. Yes. So that's effectively your different classes. Mm. Now, for the top guys in those level one schools, they mm. will get the opportunities at Grand Como, etc. Mm. That's the first place the selectors look. Yes, in they the, start okay. there. Oh, I got a guy from office. Yes. Player of color from office. Yes. He must, you know. <laughs> He's definitely, yeah. So we, we are playing a system, mm. right, which was essential for the growth of, of, of black players in South Africa, which is Quotas, yes. which I would like to speak to about Definitely, as well, definitely, which, yes. Which is a very good system mm. because it, it, it is developing, it's giving the opportunities to the children of color, right? How about the critiques about there. it? Okay, okay, okay. 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 <laughs> very, um, very, very um, but very now as a selector, mm. you look at, I've got the guy from Garsfontein, I've got the guy from Menlo Park, I've got the guy from Office, so they are playing at a high level, yes. so we immediately know what we got in them. Yes. Right. Then for the guys who are down there at the bottom in level five and rural mm. schools, township schools in the city, they are the beneficiaries of the development program. Mm. So the SA Legends have got programs in place yes. to look after those guys. Yes. The VUCA program, yes. the Kawi Week for yes. the 15th, that caters for those guys. Mm. Okay. okay. But now you sit in our province with a large group here in the middle, mm. level two, three, and four. They mm. don't qualify for Ikawe because their school's too big. They've got five teams instead of four. And they don't qualify for Craven Week or Gran Como. They, they're not going to be looked at there because... Yeah. And yet those kids are essential. Yes. Because let's take the Bulls under 16 now. Yes. We select three under 16 teams. Mm. Right? So that's one team that goes to Gran Como, Como and two teams that go and plays in the North Fall competition. Yes. So because we apply the quotas consistently mm. correctly, that means that we are going to have 36 under 16 boys of color in mm. the provincial squads. Mm. Your level one schools are not going to provide 36 boys. Yeah. You know? So we need to develop that missing middle. We need mm. to put programs in place. Mm. And I'm telling you now, Randy, it's those guys mm. who quite often make it. Mm. You know, mm. you look at this current Springbok team. Yes. How many of those guys came, came from non-traditional rugby schools? Yes, school? yes. We were speaking you know? of Makazolo, man. Baby. Yes. He didn't even play Craven Week. Yeah. He didn't. And I can see, I love, you know what's so interesting about this conversation? There's a lot of interaction on social media. So if our listeners are wondering, what's this sound? It means people are interacting with us right now yeah. because they, they want to know what's happening. You know, but you, you were saying so because look at someone like Makazolo, Umam PMP. Yeah. He, he, it shows what you're saying is very important. Mm. If someone can go through that and still make it to the highest level, it shows that there's a lot of potential. Absolutely. We've there's, got so much talent in yeah, this country. We limit our depth. But I want us to, to talk solutions. Yeah. I want us now, to do, what I want mm. to say is now you got two boys. Mm. One is in an office mm. and another one is in a smallest, let's say Sutherland. Sutherland, right? yes. So here these boys are, they arrive up at the trials. Mm. They are the same. Mm. Right. Invariably, the boy from office is going to get picked. Yes. Because the selectors know what they've got in this guy. They've yes. seen him play against other strong provinces. But what I'm saying is, mm. that boy from the smaller province, if he hits a level at trials, but he's at the same level mm. as that guy, you should seriously look at this guy. You should consider him. Because he is yeah. there without having had access to the similar levels of conditioning Ooh. or similar levels of coaching. Ooh. Understand? So he might be the Ooh. guy with the more potential. Yes. So imagine you take that guy yes. and you put him in a program where you can develop him, where you can mm. give him a proper feeding program, where you can give him a proper gym program, mm. where you can give him proper coaches. Mm. Then he's going to go further. Certainly. That's my point. Yeah. Also, the guy in the small school. Now, let's take a guy like that. He is now the one player from his school who made it through to that round of class. Yes. I can tell you that guy at his school mm. is being exposed to decision-making that he will never experience in another team. 100%. Because the game has to happen. He makes it happen. Yes. Understand? So everyone in his team is playing off him. Yes. You know, so he is making decisions every single time yeah. he's out in that field. Yeah. Yeah. Where the boy is in the team where there's 15, 14 other good players don't necessarily do that. Mm. He sticks to his structures. Yeah. So we are neglecting these boys because mm. they are from smaller schools. Mm. You know, and uh, we we missing a lot of them. Yeah, right. And that that that's a danger that we run with. So for me, mm. development is about yes. Let's give the guys in the townships opportunity to mm. develop. But now, what's what we're doing? We're just picking them for teams. Mm. Right. So now I've got my trials for my under fourteen um, Oliver Tambo team. Mm. The 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 guys who works for the Bulls, they bring me the numbers mm. of guys that I should look at. I pick them for the team. But that yeah. boy goes home. 
Yeah. He lives in Sushungube. Yes. Right? What am I doing where he lives to help him develop mm. at the same rate as the boy in a privileged school? Yes. Understand? Yes. yes. That's where the program mm. is not, not providing at the moment. So uh, with, with the under 15s now, when yes. I when our under 15 in Kawi team, Kawi team yes. we had a boy there from Amman's Kral, Sikhle Rechlambu. Yes. He's an excellent player. But mm. Randy, if we don't change his circumstances, he's not going to make it through. He's going to be limited. He's going to be, be cut. Yeah, because he doesn't have access to proper food every day. Mm. You know, he's not eating right. Mm. He doesn't have access to a gymnasium. He doesn't mm. have access to good conditioning mm. coaches. He doesn't have access to good skills coaches. Mm. So he's just going to fall further and further behind, no matter how much potential he has. Mm. That boy travels three hours to get to Loftus to a practice. Yes. So I have my practices on a Monday at, at four o'clock. He has yes. to leave his school at one o'clock. Sure, it takes him fifty rand to get to Loftus. Yeah. Then we practice for an hour and a half. He phones me at 8.30 at night. So I just got home. Mm. You know, now how's mm. that right? Mm. So it's three hours to get to practice, three hours to get home. Yeah. 50 rand to get to practice, 50 rand to, to get go home. Back. And it's a, a boy who doesn't have that yeah. money. So luckily the Bulls provide in terms of the money. Yes. So they give the boys transport money and all that. But I mean, there were quite a couple of times where I had to, for my pocket, give this guy money. Yes. But now that boy, yeah. I look at him, I see so much talent. But if we don't change his circumstances, it's, it's going to fall. It becomes null and void. Yes. 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 yes you know. Yes. So what we need to do is in those programs. Yeah. We need to put systems in place there, mm. where those guys are in their areas, mm. where we can help them. Yes. So we need to have. I know Yaku Kutzer at the Falcons is doing that. He's been yeah. getting sponsors in terms of food. Yes. Where he, he helps the kids now in terms of with nutrition. Nutrition. Yeah. You know, which is an eighty percent for me role. But, yeah. but you've got eight eight areas in in and around Pretoria. Mm. So imagine you can have eight centers of excellence mm. there where you got one good coach, you know. Those are the solutions. Conditioning yes. coach and a, a sponsor provides the food. Mm. And those boys, every afternoon after school, they gather there. we got a squad of 25 who works with that guy. So mm. you are then building eight different teams. Mm. And mm. then you bring them together and out of them, you select your provincial and the 15 car with team yes. or something like that. Yes. But then at least there's a program that will help mm. these boys keep on developing. But it's also about getting the right people in the right positions. Yes. It, it goes back to leadership. Yes. It goes back to what we spoke about. Now, uh, because I know when we're having a great time, the devil likes fast forwarding time, you know, and mm. this is such an informative discussion. And I just want to remind our listeners, but how do we ensure that it goes? Because we mentioned the problem is gatekeepers. How do we ensure that it goes through and beyond even just the money? I'm going to go back to this uh, um, uh, um, white sport connotation where rugby is linked to, to, to white people. There's this tournament that happens. You know, Bella Vieki, <laughs> uh, um, Boki, Boki, Boki Viek, Boki Viek, mm. where it's strictly for white people. Yes. We know about it. And it, there's no black people that are allowed there. It's mm. like a Craven Week specifically for white people that benefits white children. Now, you that, know? that thing was started. It's called the AVS. Mm. AVS. Mm. It was started um, by guys who felt that the quota system mm. was neglecting the white child. So mm. there is a tournament like that, specifically aimed at white children. Yes. Right? Which is called the Bokiviak. Yes. And, and you're 100% right. Now, mm. Um, one of the things that the guy who brought me into the development yes. is a guy called Henry Verster. Mm. He's at Midstream College. He's also the Bulls Grand Comer coach. Yes. Now he's, a, he's a brilliant man. And his mm. whole objective was to try to create a pathway where we can develop our black children mm. for when they get to Grand Como yes. and later on the Kremlin. Yes. So as I said to you, we need 36 boys of color. Yes. So we need to create them early enough. You can't yes. wait till under 16 trials and now suddenly look around. It starts earlier. Yeah. Let's start them at under 14. Yes. So anyway, so um, Henry came up with this concept of why don't we start mm. a week for black children, mm. you know, players of color, mm. homegrown, that missing middle. Yes. So yeah. what we are working on now, and this is the proposal that we're going to present, yes. is we want to have an inland provinces tournament. Okay. The, 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 the coastal provinces don't have problems with numbers. <laughs> right. yeah. But we want a tournament for inland provinces. Okay, your, right? your Gauteng. So it's uh, it's the Bulls, the Lions, the Falcons, the Pumas, Limpopo Bulls. Bulls, yes. Um, Griffins, Free State, mm. you know. Um, so those, those, those provinces. Mm. So we establish a, pro a tournament for them, an under-15 tournament, mm for the missing middle. So at the moment, you got that under 15 tournament for Ikawe, mm. right? But that missing middle, level two, three, and four schools yes. out of them, 
let's select a team out of the best players of color mm. for each province and let's organize a tournament for those boys. Mm. Because then from the under 14, we can feed through to that and then we can feed through to, to the under 16. Yes. Then you've got a program, a system of development. You were raised with the, with the laws of uh, John Maxwell. Yes. The leadership laws. Influence. And the law yeah. of process. Yes. States 21. that nothing happens in a day. Everything is about daily development. Mm. So same with the growth. I cannot take a kid and in two months turn him into a provincial rugby That's player. That's true. But l- give him to me in under 14 mm. and let me work over three years with that no boy. Chance. And by the time he's in grade 10, by the time he's under 16, he can be a good mm. pr- provincial player. Mm. And from there we can take him further. Oh. Right. Yes. And that is what we, we got to... So we must have a system in place mm. of development. Mm. And that is a week that we are going to try to establish now. We're going yes. to try to get the, the permissions to, to, to establish that. We need funding. Yes. I wanted that. to I wanted to speak about that because we did mention money. <clears throat> what, what, what... To someone who's listening, who's curious right now and says, hey, I want to give a, a, a hand just to, you know, lend and my support mm. here and there. What do you think you need from the public? Well, a, a week like that will cost you about 150000 mm. Okay, now the reason why it's That's so, just so minimum, yes. Is because the unions don't have money. Mm. Right, so if you look at the Bulls, you look at the Stormers, our, our unions really don't have money left. Mm. So... Uh, all the things that have been provided in the past that's not going to be provided anymore you know yes. so things like kit yes and free transport and free yes. this and free that it's it's a difficult situation mm. so uh, if we want to establish a week like this mm. we need to be able to run the tournament provide accommodation and then we need to get a sponsor for each team participating who will yes. cover some of their basic costs yes right yes but um yeah, that is that is what you will need. So it obviously also needs us to have this continuation of this discussion. Yes. As we as we uh, build up and, and creating this vision. You know, and I, I think it's very important because th- that's a solution. Mm. That's a solution. We tend to complain. We tend to complain but not create solutions. But mm. because of time, sir, why should men play rugby? Why should boys play rugby? Oh, the last question. <laughs> not even yet. <laughs> We're still going to quotas. But right. wh- why should boys play rugby? Okay, Randy, when God made us. Yes. Right, in Genesis 1. Yes. We read that God said, let us create man. This is now after everything was created. Yes. Right. Then God said, let us create man in our own image. Mm. So man and woman was created. Mm. Right. And then we read about the creation of Adam, Mm. where God created Adam. And he said, let's create this guy in our image. And then he created Adam. Mm. That was before the Garden of Eden. Mm. So God created Adam in the wilderness. Oh, Adam is a wild animal. Oh. Understand? Yeah. Then the Garden of Eden was created and Adam was alone and then God made Eve. Mm. And he made Eve inside the garden. Mm. So Eve is a little bit more domesticated, if I can put it that way, yes. than what Adam is. Shaka Zulu with his Zulu army yeah. and the Kosa army yes. who fought their battles, you yes. know, and the Sutu. Let's put the vendors defended. in as well. Yes, Let's put the, the vendors, vendors in. The yeah. vendors can fight. Them. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah. you've got so many warriors mm. in those nations. And now we've got rugby. Yes. We don't need war. We don't need war. We can, we can exert that physical stuff on the rugby field. Yeah. You know, and then walk off afterwards and be buddies. Yes. You know? You said something to me when we were in um, KwaZulu Natal, when we conquered the mighty, the huge Drakens bag mm. with my kid bag. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the first person to climb the Drakens bag with a kid bag. You were stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it was not smart, but no. we conquered it. I think I, made, I said a world record. But there was a point where. I don't know who we were at this specific place just before the chains, if I'm not wrong. Yes. And you were answering this and you said, if if boys don't um, entertain their wild side, mm. they go and entertain it somewhere else. Yes. You know, and, and that stuck with me forever. Yeah. You know, I remember also, and I have to share this because it's good to share it. Someone could relate to this. When I got injured in rugby, that changed a whole, a lot in my life mm. because... I then, from, from, from entertaining that, I started shifting into other things. Mm. And, you know, and, and I just remembered your voice <clears throat> coming up and saying, if you don't entertain your physical side and mm. your, your wilderness, you're, you're going to entertain it in a different way. 
Yes. And and I mean, there's so many other factors, social factors, uh, absent fathers today, mm. p- p- fathers running away. So males then just you know become a bit more feminine as well, mm. you know, because they're raised by their their mothers, their yes. grandmothers, you know. So this is why rugby would become a very crucial sport. You know, and if you look at it, the first thing a mom is going to do, she's going to protect her child. She is. Understand? So, oh no, this rugby here, is dangerous. Yes, that's right. Oh, you're gonna get hurt. I didn't want my mom at a rugby match. <laughs> I remember Kumo's mother. <laughs> so unfortunately, yeah. that's what happens. So our boys yeah. are being wrapped in these cocoons mm. because we want to protect them. Mm. But you know what? Allow the boy mm. to play, allow him to be physical. And rugby is such a good tool. Mm. So rugby is not such a dangerous sport if yeah. you've got a good coach. If you've got a good coach. So if your coaches can teach you the right techniques and the right mm. skills, mm. you know, so if you know how to tackle properly, then you don't get hurt in the tackle. Certainly. If yeah. you get taught how to fall when you get tackled, then yes. you don't get hurt either. Yes. So it's about about being taught the right techniques and the right skills mm. that is how you prevent injuries mm. you know um, I've seen the worst injuries at Sutherland mm. over the last few years it didn't happen on the rugby field mm. you know I've seen some very bad leg breaks on the soccer field yeah and cuts and bruises on the hockey field yeah and yeah. other <laughs> other sports you know yeah. I've seen a kid get hit by a javelin and a <laughs> 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 meeting a few years ago it was terrible yeah. But that's the thing, you know. So if we just say, no, you can't do stuff because it's dangerous, then we're going to do nothing. Mm. You can't even cross the road. Mm. Understand? So we got to look at what is good for the development of the child. Yes. What can I do as a parent to help my child become mm. the best he could be mm. and become the most complete person? Mm. Because that's my job as a parent. Yes. I must prepare my child for life. Yes. When my child leaves my home, they must be successful in life. Mm. And if I keep on wrapping them up and fighting their battles for them mm. and protecting them, then I'm not exposing them to the real world out Certainly. there. And then they're going to hit that and they're not going to know how to deal with mm. it. And as parents, that's our job. Yeah. Okay. And rugby for me is a great tool that I use at Sutherland to develop our boys. Mm. Okay. Powerful. Yes. Powerful. Closing it off. Closing it off. Let's close it off with some controversy. Quota system. Very much criticized uh, by a lot of white people because apparently it's taking away. It's unfair. But uh, to some people in the debate side of it, they will say, no, it's to correct the imbalances of the past. Give opportunity to, to those that have been neglected. You know? So I want to just get in a short space, because you did mention that you think mm. it's a good idea. Yes. What is your view of the quota system? Um, at school level especially, mm. it's essential. You Very know, Unfortunately, important. we do sit with a legacy from the past that we have to rectify. Certainly. There are so many things that we have to fix in this country. Mm. And um, the only way to, to fix that is sometimes by enforcing certain ways of doing it. Yeah. Right. yeah. You know, you definitely, you, you, you need to give those kids opportunities. Yeah. Because um, we, we, we have to encourage and entice. Yes. And give opportunity for them to play. Certainly. It's, it's, it's very important. It makes sense. And I, I, I'm just very happy because such, this show today was so informative. It was the, 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 the information that you shared. You know, I, I, I really mean this not just to, 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 to make you feel good, sir. You know, th- these are the topics we have to talk about. These are, these are the discussions we have to have. Sometimes they make us unpopular. Sometimes they, they, they put us in a position where, look, we are the guy that people don't like, mm-hmm. you know. But because we are called onto this earth to do certain things, let us do it and let, let us mm-hmm. not live in fear. And I, I really have to commend you. On, on what you've done, not just for me, for so many young people. I really have to say, I salute you because you are living it, not just saying it. You know, you involved me into the coaching now recently as well. You 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 believed in my rugby, even when I was still in high school. And for those who don't know, the reason why I went to the UK was because of this great man. I didn't have money. I didn't have money. We were having this discussion and I'm not blowing his horn. I'm being honest. And he found a way to raise funds for people like myself to, 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 to manage to get that experience and go out there. So I know God sent you here for this. Uh, in fact, I'm glad I'm wearing my shades because my ears are watery now. I mean, my eyes are watery. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because really, you, you, you are more than just an inspiration. And I just had to tell you this in a worldwide platform. And I really pray God continues to use you 
in many great ways. I, I, from your side, I just like to get maybe words of inspiration, words of encouragement to someone out there, to someone out there, to a young child. And I don't think let's leave the ladies out because female rugby is becoming something special as yes, well. Absolutely. You know, so to a young girl and a boy out there who believe that rugby will free them and give them true fulfillment, mm. what do you leave them with? I want to leave them with words from my son. Come on. Right. Yes. Now, uh, I've, I'm very blessed with my two boys. Ah, amazing. They, they, they're two amazing kids. But anyway, um, my son once said to me, mm. you know, if you are good enough, you will get your opportunities. Whoa. If you are working hard enough, mm. you will get it. And I, I, I think if we look back at this World Cup now, then someone like Peter Steff the Tway oh. is, is testament to that. Oh. The one thing that separates Peter Steff from everyone else in his position in the world is his work rate, his character. Hardcore. The fact that he doesn't stop working. Yeah. You know, and you look at someone like Marco Zolom of Pimpi, mm. right? He came from the rural areas. Mm. I mean, he only got his breakthrough three years ago. I read yesterday in one of the articles that four years ago, he was still working in a supermarket backing shelves. You know, mm. and he was playing club rugby yes. for the province, and then yes. thanks to the Super Kings, he got an opportunity. Yes. And from there, he was able to move to the Sharks. Yes. Now that is a guy who, after school, I mean, we're talking now. He's now 29. So yes. what I'm saying is, at the age of 25, he wasn't playing professional rugby. Yeah. Understand? Mm. But he kept on going because yeah. he had this passion. He kept yeah. on working, and at the right time, God will open the doors for you in your yes. life. So yes. if this is God's plan for your life. Yes. Then he will open the right doors at the right time. Mm. All you got to do is you got to persist and you got to work hard. Yeah. And do your best. And that's it. Preparation meeting opportunity. Yes. That's what it is. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Anton Fenter in the building. And oh man, <laughs> I told you today's a special day. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Oh, thank you so much for inviting the, me. Like I, I I had a great time. I learned today. I I still learn from you and look I always tell people we look alike yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's that top deck yeah. effect <laughs> <laughs> and then your favorite place in the world that you've traveled or played this amazing sport called rugby or even coached well my favorite place in the world is next to my wife Ah, okay, first of all. that's beautiful then I can take you to some very beautiful places where we've been as part of our leadership training yes okay but you want to say, uh, with regards to rugby, the only real place I've been to outside of South Africa with the rugby has been the UK. Eh? The UK. Yeah, with you guys. Yeah. So um, That's where we learned some skamika. Oh. <laughs> we can't let go of that. Oh, we can't. <laughs> we've uh, got 10 seconds shocking. left. Take, we've got 10 seconds. Chocolate or ice cream? Ice cream every day. All day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, you're still tuned into Sportainment on THD.24. As I said, I got a great man in the building, Mr. Anton Fenter, and we spoke everything rugby, World Cup, leadership. And man, this is going to happen again, sir. Mm, we you, have Andy. to continue this. You know, you called this years ago, and here we are. Yes. And I'm so, and I also called Peter Steph the toy before he got the award. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I, I, I would love to urge to those who are listening right now who are in resourceful positions, you know, this needs more than one person. Um, a, a few of our great leaders, Nelson Mandela, Robert Mangaliso Sobuku, have said, you can't punch with the finger. You put all fingers together, it creates mm. a force. Yes. Let's come together. Irrespective, it doesn't even have to be monetary. Maybe just your time. Invest mm. in people. Invest in young people. Absolutely. And and clearly rugby mm. has been the secret in unifying us. And thank you for your time, sir. Oh, thanks, a big really. shout out to you. And I'll close it off. How can people get a, a hold of you? Where can people get a hold of you if they want to give back, if they want to invest in these projects? You know, what can they do? Which channels should they follow? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought that far yet. So right, we'll, I think they can contact you. They can contact me, yes, right? Yes, okay, yes. all right. No, and, and I yeah. mean, that's why Sportainment is here. Yes. So that we can make sure we channel things in the right place. But from my side, I always say, find the leader within you. You know, the leader you're looking for, that hero, is within you. And I yes. define leadership as using our God-given influence, our natural gifts to put people in better positions so that they are able to empower themselves as well as the generations that follow. Absolutely. You see, we should have that generational thinking, mm. thinking of the future. And, um, you know, the biggest regret in life is the, the, the regret of not taking action. Mm. Live your dream. 
take action and find fulfillment that's why we are here on this earth absolutely and uh, as i still say thank you for your time thank you for your presence we give you your flowers while you can still smell them ladies thank and you, gentlemen boy. mr anton fenter and once again do make sure you touch base with us on our social media at thd.24 that's the big brand and of course at sportainment underscore on touch instagram at sportainment underscore t and perhaps you want to chat to me at rendani underscore n o one mc the doy vara abin and then our president is venda so if you want to get them tenders you must learn how to say nda nedzina langan de rendani chibura aka rendi your number one mc yes man god bless digital is the future and we are that future